In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Father in heaven, we come before you. We trust in you, Lord, and we thank you for the great gift of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, that, that he has given himself to us in the most blessed sacrament of the altar, the Holy Eucharist. Food for the journey, food for strength, to nourish us, to give us life. Lord Jesus, help us to grow in love and adoration and admiration of this great gift, the Holy Eucharist, this day. Open our hearts to hear what it is you wish us to hear in my voice to proclaim your praise. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. O Mary, conceived without sin, pray for us who have recourse to thee. Three points uh, where, uh, where I'm heading my, uh, my outline for today, if you will. Um, why am I even Catholic? Three different opinions on the Eucharist and a decision. Why is it that you or I are even Catholic? Three different opinions on what the Eucharist is and a decision that you and I have to make. So why in the world am I even Catholic? Why are you even Catholic? Is it just because we were born Catholic? Just because we were born in this town of Armada or wherever we, we find ourselves from? Um, why, why, what is it that, that, that we've chosen to be here today? Why not, why not attend you know, Billy Bob Bible Baptist Church you know, down the road or, or, or any other Lutheran church or a Methodist church or Episcopalian church? Why do we find ourselves here today? Why am I Catholic? I mean, the church is a mess, not St. Mary's. We're, we're not a mess. Lowercase c is, is great. Um, but the uppercase C, the church, is a mess right now. And um, to choose to remain in the church is to say something. You know, the priest scandal, the bishop scandal. Faithful who, who pick and choose when to come to Mass. that don't represent the faith well. They don't live the faith well. Um, ugly, ugly Catholics that we know. Parishioners that, that, that are sitting across the pews from us that, that don't live the faith. The politicians who call themselves Catholic, who don't live the faith and pretend they do and don't, don't practice the faith. And so you and I must ask the question and answer the question, why am I Catholic? Especially for the young people who, who are here today. You know, so it's not just a thing that our parents hand on to us. I've made a conscious decision to say I want and I choose to be Catholic. And so why is it that, that, that we want to be a Catholic? Is Catholicism just one of 400,000 denominations? Or is it something that, that God has, has given to us? Why am I Catholic? Why stay? And so the the church makes a very bold claim. Holy Mother Church makes a very bold claim. The Catholic Church makes the claim that she was founded by Jesus Christ and that Jesus gave authority to one man, St. Peter. And the apostles are successors of all of, or the, our bishops are successors of all of the apostles. And since St. Peter, there's been an unbroken line of succession from St. Peter all the way to today, Pope Francis. And so Jesus, on the day of his resurrection, he walks through the doors of the upper room and he stands with his apostles. He stands with our bishops and St. Peter. And he, he stands there and he says to them, whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Heaven listens to the church. That's a bold claim. Heaven listens to the church that Jesus Christ founded. We make a bold claim as Catholics. And so no matter how ugly, no matter how dysfunctional the church is at times, this is the bride of Christ. And this is what God has given to us. And so over the last five weeks, <clears throat> we've walked through the, uh, the bread of life discourse, John chapter 6, as I said at the start of Mass, whereas Jesus tells us, I am the bread of life. I am the bread that has come down from heaven. Whoever, whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has life within them. And whoever does not 
does not have life within them. And so those that Jesus is proclaiming this to, they followed him since John chapter 1, which, which is probably you know, a good three, four, five days, and just before that, maybe a couple weeks before that. And G, they've seen Jesus feed the 5,000. They've seen him walk on water, and now he's saying to them, I am the bread of life. Eat my flesh and drink my blood. And they look at him, and they say, this is a hard saying. We can't believe this. This is a hard saying. And Jesus' response is, does this shock you? It's a bold claim. He's making a bold claim. Does this shock you? It's kind of a strange response. Does this shock you? You've just seen me raise the dead. You've seen me walk on water. You've seen me feed the 5,000. You've seen me heal the blind. Does this shock you? And he lets them walk away. Many abandon him and leave. Jesus then turns to the twelve and he says, Will you leave me too? Are you going to abandon me? Does this shock you? Will you leave me also? He doesn't change his words. He doesn't change his teaching. He doesn't, he doesn't say, guys, I'm sorry. You know, I was, I was, it's just a metaphor. It's just kind of a symbol. just a thing that we say. Just, I'm just trying to be a new guru. Whatever. No. He doesn't change. He doesn't go after those who leave him. He says, will you leave me too? So that's important for us to hear. And then what happens right after that? Who is it that stands up on behalf of all of those who stayed? Who is it that speaks on behalf of the crowd? It's Peter, the image of Holy Mother Church, the image of the Holy Catholic faith. He speaks on their behalf and he says, where are we going to go, Lord? Who can, who can give us the answers to life? Only you have the words of everlasting life. And so the church, again, is, is, is how dysfunctional she may be and is, is how improper she may look at times. It's the church who stands as the herald of the gospel to proclaim the truth and only one truth that Jesus Christ is Lord in this world. And that he wants to feed us from this altar with his body and his blood. And as the world walks away, will we stay? The Eucharist is the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ. And as we see, it is the Eucharist that has caused great division in God's people from the very beginning. Jesus Christ himself saw the division. We yet to think that the division won't continue to to happen. Jesus lets them go. He lets them do their own thing, but he remains to teach his 12 and those who remain. In 1517, Martin Luther splits from the Holy Catholic Church. He nails his 50-some points or whatever on the, uh, the cathedral wall. And at the heart of the rupture of Lutheranism, at the heart of the rupture and his severing from the Catholic faith is his belief in the Eucharist, is his his denial of the Eucharist. Luther is protesting many things, but at the heart is the Eucharist. That's where we get the word Protestant from. They're protesting the Catholic Church. And so he's protesting our belief in authority, the Holy Father and the bishops, our belief in the the Holy Eucharist, and our belief in the sacraments, particularly the Eucharist and the priesthood. And so since that time of Luther's separation from the Catholic Church, there have been many severings, many ruptures, many breaks away from them to continue to, to separate themselves further and further and further from the Catholic Church. The image that I, I often use or that I have is kind of like a, um, uh, a mother ship or, or a, a cruise ship that's out at, at shore. You know, the, the lifeboats go out. The closer they are to the mother ship, the closer they are to the, to the cruise ship, they are to, to salvation, to refuge. But the further they float away, they're, they're just floating and drifting. And so, too, with so many of our, our non-Catholic uh, Christians... 
they've separated themselves so distantly from the Catholic Church. Some look much like us, some don't. But there are three distinct opinions on the Eucharist, three distinct teachings on the Eucharist, one of them being ours, what the Holy Catholic Church has always taught, our view. And it is what Jesus has commanded us to do, to eat his flesh and to drink his blood. And the Holy Catholic Church has always taught that Jesus is fully and truly, substantially present, body, blood, soul, and divinity in the Eucharist. We've taught that from day one. And that the Mass is a sacrifice. That here at Mass, Calvary becomes present to us. That the bread and wine transform into his body and his blood, while the appearance of bread and wine remain. Over the millennia, we've defined that with a word. To, the word that we use is transubstantiation. Trans, to transform, substantia, that the substance transforms. It transforms into sub something. The substance transforms. But the accidents, we say, the appearance remains. And we've taught this from the very beginning. The second opinion on the Eucharist that some... Uh, Christians believe is that Holy Communion is a reenactment or a, a commemoration of the of the Last Supper. That the bread and wine are just symbolic. It's kind of like a stage play. It's just words and, and kind of just reenacts that moment. But it's just merely symbolic. And the third opinion is that the bread and wine hold a spiritual presence of the body and blood but they do not become it. That is just a spiritual thing. But from the moment of Jesus' resurrection and his ascension, the apostles offered Mass and they taught the belief in the Eucharist. We have writings from the first century, a writing called the Didache, which from the very century that the, that the disciples of the apostles wrote that, that, that give the exact layout of Mass and teach the Eucharist. In the sacred scriptures, in the book of Corinthians, St. Paul commands the Corinthians that he's writing to them. He says to them, if you eat and drink of the body and blood of the Lord unworthily, you eat and drink condemnation upon yourself. That's in scripture. Is St. Paul or the apostles, disciples, are they writing about condemnation for a symbol? Or just a spiritual uh, representation? No. No. Because Jesus is truly present, body, blood, soul, and divinity, and it's what we've taught and what we've believed from the very beginning because this is what Jesus has given to us. Why are you Catholic? You have to make that determination yourself. You have to answer that question if you've never asked it to yourself before. I am a Catholic and I choose to remain so, not because my parents just raised me, they're here today, not just because they raised me in the faith. I made the ascent to the faith myself. And I've chosen to remain because it's the truth. Because it's the truth. And because Jesus established one church, and he wishes to feed us with his sacred body and his precious blood, where I find life and nourishment. And without the Eucharist, I wither and die. I would rather die than give up the Blessed Sacrament. Why are you Catholic? You have a decision to make. In that first reading, we hear Joshua. It's one of my favorite readings in all of Scripture. Many people have a plaque in their house with these words from Joshua up in their home. Joshua is Joshua's the one that leads the Israelites into the Promised Land, those who are wandering for 40 years in the desert. And he's leading, it's Joshua, not Moses, that crosses the threshold of the, of the Promised Land. Joshua gets the tribes of Israel together, and they're about to go into battle. And he looks back, and he looks at all these Israelites, and they're starting to cower. They're like, we, we just walked for 40 years. We don't want to fight. And they're starting to look at all of, the, all of the nations, everyone that they're going to go do battle with, to take God's land back. And they're looking at all of them, and they're starting to cower, and, and they're starting to give in to their false gods, starting to give in to the allure of the world. And Joshua looks at them, and he says, you can go if you want to. Go worship the false gods. Go give in to the world. Go do whatever you want. But as for me... In my house, 
we will worship the Lord. I can't make the decision for you. You have to make the decision yourself whether to follow him, whether to call yourself a proud Catholic, whether to live the faith in this dark world or not. Brothers and sisters, if the church, if Holy Mother Church, if the Catholic faith gets the Eucharist wrong, we get everything wrong. If we're wrong on the Eucharist, nothing else matters. Marriage, divorce, sexual morality, contraception, family life, murder, divorce, rape, name it. None of it matters. Throw the commandments out the window because we're wrong on the Eucharist. If it's just an invention, if it's a man-made thing, give it up. But we're not wrong because we're doing what Jesus has commanded us, what the bride of Christ has done from day one after God sends forth his Holy Spirit upon the church. This is who we are, but we choose to live it or not. And so as the world grows darker and darker and darker outside of these worlds, outside of these walls, we will be pulled in many different directions, and we have an individual choice to make. And the question remains, why am I Catholic? I answer for myself that I, as for me and my house, I choose to serve the Lord. I'm willing to go into battle with you and for you, to lead you into battle. But the decision's yours to make. And we have to make the decision to remain or to leave. In a few moments, the Lord's going to come down and make himself present at this altar. It's not a spiritual sign, not just a spiritual sign, and it's not a symbol. It's his flesh. And if you feel so, so called worthy to come to receive him, he's beckoning you this day and come come to the altar to receive the bread of angels the bread of the lord amen confident in our father let us stand now and proclaim our faith i believe in one god the father almighty maker of heaven and earth of all things visible.